hopefully we're live. Uh, this is my first time doing a live stream, so please bear with. I think I'm doing it right. Okay. Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, live chat and so and chill. I just had a bunch of uh, tasks to do and if you're anything like me, if there's like, you know, mending or that kind of stuff, rehemming I think is the worst. But if you have anything like that, uh, I thought scheduling a time to do it would make me do it. So here we are. I'm just checking the chat as I talk to ensure that there is audio and video coming through. Okay, welcome. Uh, I hope you guys have your sewing with you or you know your hand sewing or whatever it is you're doing. Uh, I hope you can see both screens and the little setup I have over here. And I also know that there is a delay between me speaking, this transmitting, going over to you and the chat, I think. Very, very odd. Um, sound needs to be higher. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Okay, I think my audio input is as high as it can be, so I'm really sorry I can't fix that. Great, okay. So, how are you doing? I hope you're doing good. Uh, I'm doing okay. It's a Sunday, so, you know, we're just chilling. And... The first thing I'm going to be working on is this. You might have seen it in my stories before. Um, you might have not. I haven't posted about it yet. I don't know. You know when you like work on a project and you kind of, you know, like I have half a video made for this, but I never finished that video and I never really had a chance to wear this because I did it during the pandemic. I didn't get to go to the medieval fair this year, so it was just kind of a bummer and I didn't end up posting anything about it because I didn't wear it anywhere, so I didn't have any photos. But it's a really nice uh, lilac, lavender kind of colour linen kirtle. I think it's really cute. I don't know if you can see, you can't see much of it with this camera. Okay. Oh, stress knitting. Oh, no. I hope everything goes well. Elections are very stressful. Germany, we have some German people around. I love it. Oh, and Americans. Thank you for coming. I know it's very early. Sorry, I'm going to try to also keep an eye on the chat, of course. Um, so the cursor looks like this. It's like a very simple cursor, but I think it's pretty cute. It's a pretty nice color. Uh, but yeah, I didn't get a chance to really wear it anywhere. So I also didn't do a lot of fishing. I don't know. I'm just lazy, you guys. <laughs> so, uh, things I'm going to be changing is I'm going to shorten it because I did actually wear it for a shoot. Well, a shoot. I went to the woods and took some photos of it. So I don't know if you can see. Even after washing it twice, the dirt is really, the the hem is really dirty. And this is because it's way too long. I kept tripping on it all the time. Do you make your dresses too long? Like, ugh. I just. You know, I've always thought that historically accurate is meant to like cover your feet, you know, decency and all that. Hi to Canada, whoa! Hi New Virginia, San Francisco, these are all places I want to visit. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've, I just wanted to shorten my hem for practicality. Number one, it'll be easier to walk in. Uh, number two, I hopefully won't have to clean it as much, I hope. But yeah, uh, I just wanted to show you, I don't know if you can see, actually this fitting on this is pretty decent. I don't know if my camera... Oh, I can do the thing. So I, uh, I set up a different thing. Ooh. I, I am really sorry, I can't figure out how to remove the focus bit from my camera. But we're gonna try and see if this works. Mm. Got our first technical difficulty. My camera is not cooperating. Okay, wait. Let's try. Sometimes I'm really jealous of all the people who have done all the live streams and then they already know how to do things. Okay. No, it's still on focus. Whatever. Just wanted to show you 
my like nice little stitches but I'm gonna unpick them anyway so I guess it doesn't really matter okay so knitting oh also I've just started knitting I love I love seeing you guys talking about knitting because I literally just started the other day and it's been kind of life-changing I'll be honest um I don't know why I never got into knitting before I just thought I really couldn't do it and now that I have well I haven't made anything you know, I've made like two samples, but I feel like there's a future there for me <laughs> and it's going to be a really slippery slope. <laughs> okay, so I've got my unpicker or seam ripper or whatever you call it. I feel like everyone has a different name for these, but yeah, this is my unpicker. And now I'm just going to, you know, get rid of all this hard work because... If you didn't have to unthink things you put so much time into, are you really even sewing? Oh, it's so sad. I worked so hard on this. <laughs> um, I'll make my hems too short on it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's it. I think if they're longer as well, you usually can get away with them being more uneven. <laughs> Not if they're short, it's pretty more obvious. So that's another, <laughs> another good shout for long hems. But yeah, I just... I kept tripping on it and then you know I kind of wanted to wear these things more because I feel like if it's a bit shorter it might even make like a cute dress like a day dress uh, yeah seam ripping I got you man that's me too right now I'm really sorry you've had to seam rip stuff um you were there hope I said that right hi from the Netherlands love the Netherlands so many friends there everyone keeps leading me to go to the Netherlands um Peru! Oh, that's cool! Oh my gosh! Oh yeah, I love seeing where you guys are all from. That's really cool. 1903 corset mock-up. Oh, you're hand sewing your mock-up? Oh my gosh, that's hardcore. Whoa. Going through the dress. Oh, I'm sorry. Moves are really stressful. I totally agree. I hope you can get like a little piece of like quiet and just chill. Is this even on camera? Yeah, uh, I'm really enjoying the, sh the chat. If you're high energy, it might be boring. <laughs> I'm not a very high energy person, I'll be honest. It's kind of like why I like hand sewing, because I can just sit there and do it calmly while I watch YouTube videos. <laughs> very relatable. Unpick a tie, so you can pattern it out for Halloween ties. That's pretty cool. That's a really good shout, you know. If you're never sh quite sure like how to make things, and you have one that fits really well, if you can unpick it and somehow, like, if you want to keep it, put it back together, that's a really good resource to have. Um, I wish I could have put on some like background music. I wanted to put on like some aesthetic fall vibes, but then I didn't want to get copyright struck. Struck. It. Oh no. Oh, I worked so hard on this hem and it's all going. It's also pretty dirty. Like the inside of it is pretty dirty. And I washed it twice, I think. But thankfully it's the inside that's dirty, not the outside. So that's good to know at least. Is there a quicker way to do this? Sometimes you can do the little sometimes you're blessed. I feel blessed when that happens to me. You can like get your unpicker in there and like just go like this for a bit. But you gotta be really careful because if your unpicker is really sharp, I've cut I literally cut through fabric doing this earlier today. But it's so much faster. Mm, I just realized maybe I could probably should iron this before we sewing it. Also, I'm sorry if I talk a lot. I usually just talk to myself. Vancouver! <gasps> Oh, cage crinoline, you're fixing it. Oh, I hope it's not something too bad because those things are beasts to tame. All that like steel going around. I made one like years ago and I never want to make another. <laughs> I hope I can get away with like just not touching another for a very, very long time. Seattle, 9 a.m. That's very. <laughs> That's very early. I really appreciate you being here. 
Oh, I'm very, I'm not very functional in the morning, so. Um, oops. Southern California, good shout. I also really want to go to California. I've heard it's really good. Obviously it's got all the hot spots. LA Fabric District is where I want to live, basically. I really shouldn't mumble because I realise this mic isn't very good. Where can I move to? Ooh, a wrist injury. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah, so sewing and knitting could be really hard for that, right? My grandma keep, kept telling me, like, <laughs> she's got, like, quite bad wrist arthritis. And it's because she used to be a seamstress when she was quite young. That's a really depressing thought for people who sew and knit. So I'm going to move on for now. Oh, wearing your apron, are you, Emily? Well, I hope you... Take some photos of it because otherwise these other lovely people here will never see that video. I made a, I made a new sort of aesthetic cute apron and I gave it to my friend Emily who is lurking in the chat. And if you'd like to see that video, drop a message saying, Emily, please record some aesthetic photos of it worn. Otherwise my friends here will never see that video. It's kind of like when worlds collide and you've got YouTube friends, and then my friends. Okay, ooh. Actually, you know, if I really do rip a little bit into it, then it wouldn't be a massive issue, would it? It's such a pretty linen. If you guys watched my um, stays video recently, this linen kirtle is kind of the whole thing that set me on the lilac slash lavender path. I made this and I was just so in love with the colour that I kind of wanted to make everything else in it. But I didn't have any linen left over, I had like no fabric left over. And so I ended up making the stays in a lavender tone because I just really loved it. <gasps> so this is the kirtle that started it all and it still hasn't, hasn't seen the world. And doo -doo -doo, Austria! Hi, hello! Um, got some seams. Yep. Love felling. You know what, what the channel motto is. Every day we're felling. Uh, two hoops to reshape it. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's so harsh. And also it's like so hard to wrangle it. Like I feel like it's a full body workout to wrangle a cage crinoline. So I feel for you. <laughs> Where do I live in the UK? Uh, I'm currently in Glasgow, Scotland. Um, but my real home turf is London. No historical hobby cut project right now. Jeans need patching. Ah, oh, inner thigh. Oh my god, isn't it just? Absolutely. My jeans would always, always get ripped on the inner thigh first. And then I tried patching them up. And sometimes you can get a little extra life back from them. Um, but eventually they'll just give out. But if they're your favourite jeans, like mine were, it's absolutely worth doing that little extra patching. Ugh, yeah. Don't miss wearing jeans. I don't think I've worn jeans since before the, <laughs> before the pandemic. <laughs> before the times. And now I've discovered skirts, so I don't think there's really any way going back for me. Hideous um, mm -mm, thing. Oh! I wish we had like an option to do like a show me your cute cat photos because <laughs> that is the content I'm on the internet for. <laughs> very, very cute. Uh, oh, interesting. Knitting to keep arthritis from getting worse. That's good to know. I guess it keeps your wrist moving, right? Um, oh, thank you. I do love lilac. I don't know, I kind of thought they might wash me out, like sometimes, but I'm a very washed out person. Um, Northwest Florida, that's cool. I'm not sure what the panhandle is, but um, oh, I see, because Florida kind of looks like, okay, I, I hope that's what you mean. Um, Hello, hello, Blue. Uh, I'm sewing a kirtle. Well, I'm re-sewing the hem because I made it too long. Um, 
if you do this, like me, you might have a bunch of stuff in your wardrobe that you, you need to rehem and have them for a very long time. That is me. We're still unpicking because I always make my hands the widest possible because I love the swoosh. I just love it. I love the swoosh. It's a, it's a life I, I gotta lead. But then as soon as you have to redo that hem, <laughs> start regretting your life decisions. Lilac lace yarn. Oh, for embroidery thread. That's cool. Yeah, I just feel like I could probably embroider everything to have some lilac in it, right? Very cool. <laughs> Laundry day. I wish you the best of luck. It is a rough day. <gasps> oh my god. I thought this dress was finished, but turns out I have one seam that's just not been uh, flat felled. Oh no, I'm going to share my shame with you so you can see it. This one has not been flat felled. It has been trimmed, but for whatever reason it has not been flat felled. Well, I guess there's one more thing to do today. Great. I thought it was done. I wore it outside once. That's crazy. Um, Toronto, hello. Oh yeah, post your um, new kitten photos on Instagram and tag me. <laughs> Masa, Masa, mm. I've always wanted to say that word properly, but I think it's because I'm Portuguese, it always comes out wrong. Massachusetts, 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 Massachusetts. Oop. Tricky word to say for immigrants. Massachusetts, Massachusetts. No, nope. it's the second time I can never say it. Oh, full skirts and coffee tables. <laughs> How I understand you. <laughs> That's a swish though. How do you do the hem evenly so it doesn't get too long on one side? Aha. So the only way I do hems, actually, is probably the, not the most accurate way ever, but I just try it on and I ask someone to help me with it because obviously you can't like bend down to do it yourself because that distorts the hem. But I ask my very lovely um, partner who doesn't really know how to pin anything, but you know, we get by. And so I just say, you know, I wanted like, I have a look in the mirror first and I say, oh, I wanted like four inches off the floor or whatever. And I just ask them to put a pin like at the center front and at the side fronts, sides, side backs, and back. And that usually just ends up with an evenish kind of thing. And then I, when I turn up the hem, or the facing, or whatever kind of hem I'm doing, I just iron it into place and pin first, and then try it on, have a quick look, see if it's even all the way around. If it's not, try to fix it. A lot of it is guesswork. I don't know if, I wish someone had told me this when I first started sewing, but a lot of sewing is just guesswork. <laughs> Or at least for me it is. <laughs> I hope it's like that for other people too and it's just not just me being terrible at sewing. I hope that's helpful. Oh, if you're tired, don't sew, just chill. We're happy. We're happy. I'm really liking the friendly vibes in the chat. I was really worried because I've never done this before. Making uh, When I was starting out with sewing, I didn't want to waste a lot of fabric making something for myself, so I made dresses for my rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds adorable. That sounds so, so cute. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm picturing it in my head. I'm picturing rabbits and, and dresses. And uh, kind of loving it. <laughs> Fat filling is stressful and calming. Mate. That is absolutely the truth. Is there anything that isn't stressful in sewing? <laughs> wool fabrics from the UK? Yeah, some good wool in the UK. To be honest, I mostly just can't afford it. Even living here, even without the import and all of that is... Wool fabric, man, is a lot. And to think, and to think that wool fabric used to be the backbone of, you know, English industry in like medieval times, it's kind of crazy. Like, all they did was make wool and export it. Literally no one else had the same kind of production as the UK. 
And here we are now. Someone once told me that they, like farmers and stuff, just throw away fleeces now because it's just too expensive to have it spun and, you know, made into either yarn or fabric and just no one, no one does it anymore. And the, so the um, farmers just throw away, I think it's my friend Lee, maybe? The farmers just throw away the fleeces. And that's kind of sad, isn't it? I totally understand. I mean, it is like... The process of it is quite hard and if you're not like a big industry producer like manufacturer small small businesses is it's quite hard to do it oh sorry i've missed no i don't need tech support that's mine that's mine i'm not speaking with this on the internet oh i looked down for too long oh dear okay virginia hi nice to see you uh Ohio, very cool. I love all the different American names. Yeah, the swishier the skirt, the less noticeable uneven hems are. This is something to live by. Orlando in the house. So much guesswork. Yes, Rebecca, you are totally right. Chatty times. I am very chatty. I don't think that comes across in my videos. Well, well, the ones I have a voiceover, I can be pretty direct to the point. But the other ones, I think it does come across. I am quite chatty. Um, especially when you have something to focus your hands on and your brain is just going. If I'm not doing anything else, <laughs> usually I'm just thinking or chatting or, you know. But I really love seeing other people appear. Guesswork and deciding which mistakes you can live with. Oh, yes. One meter rule, if you couldn't see the mistake while standing one meter away, there is no mistake. <laughs> I love that. That's so true. One meter rule. You know what? I'm going to keep that in mind. Sometimes when you do like a stitch at a place or something, or if you're trying to like invisibly stitch something and one stitch shows through, but it was like a meter ago and you just can't. Some things you just have to live with. And some things probably won't even be noticeable, you know? That's the one thing I also like to try and keep in mind, is that we scrutinize the things that we make a lot more than other people do. Um, we scrutinize ourselves much more than other people do often as well. Um, and so sometimes if we think something is like blaringly obvious, it probably isn't. No one will probably even notice if you didn't say anything. Um, Full core Edwardian shirt. Oh, thank you. I love it too. Without lace, yeah. It is difficult. I will say it's, I think more than difficult, it's just time consuming. Um, but actually I've been thinking about making another shirt using that pattern. But like you say, without um, lace insert insertion, but trying to make it more like a Edwardian like dressy shirt. I think that'd be quite cool. Maybe a striped fabric or something. Just so many projects, so little time. Um, South Africa, hi, hello. Calico, you hand sew a drawstring bag with it. That's really good. I always love taking something that I can hand sew in my um, in my bag for my holiday and stuff. Little medieval, oh, a cat in a little medieval tunic costume. That's so cute. Sign cuts. I wish I had a pet. Barcel Lewis, hola, hola Sofia. Obrigada por vir ao stream. Uh, I learned to sew on YouTube. <laughs> I really don't have anything else to tell you. I learned to sew on YouTube and like those old like blog blogs that everyone used to have. Literally, that's why I make YouTube videos now is um, I just wanted to give back a little bit. And I feel like when I was learning, not a lot of people showed their mistakes. So it made me feel a bit... I don't know, like I, well, it was only me making mistakes. And so I like to do that now. I show, I show you all of my mistakes. <laughs> uh, Non-stressful thing is shopping for fabric you don't need. Amen, that is totally true. Yeah. 100 people watching. Hi, hello, thank you for being here. Here's a video about hemming and loving. Guys, there's a good suggestion for a hemming and leveling video in the chat if you're interested. I will be searching for that next. Remember that. Oh, good luck with uh, 
<laughs> Dying your hair purple, I love that. Romania, we raise an ungodly amount of sheep and around Easter. Oh, that's so sad. Alabama. I don't know why I said it in that voice, I'm so sorry. I can't do an American accent. Tennessee. Oh, all, the, all the American states. Is they throwing it away? Yeah, I, I mean, if you've got farmer contacts, I'm sure they'd be happy to give you. But obviously, like, well, it's quite hard to find them and make fun. You know what, I, it is something in my life that I'd really like to have, is to be friends with a farmer. <laughs> I feel like that should be a life goal. Ooh. Oh, I'm so behind on the chat, I'm sorry. Norwich. Uh, I'm currently in Glasgow, but I'm originally from London. Well, not from London, I'm actually Portuguese. <laughs> Edwardian witch costume for Halloween. Nice. Halloween's coming. Drop me your costumes in there, um, in the chat, so I know what, if you're wearing anything, or if you're not. Because, like, over here, Halloween isn't, isn't that big at all. So, if you're in a place that doesn't really do Halloween, like, if you wanted to do Halloween, what would you wear? I feel like that would, that'd be really cool. Canada. Oh, thank you. My studies, thank you for asking. My studies have uh, finished. Yeah, I am no longer, I'm not even sewing anymore, focus. Um, yeah, so I finished the last assignment that I had to do for this degree, which was uh, my dissertation. So my dissertation is done and dusted. It's, uh, I still haven't heard back about the actual results. So I don't know what grade I have in it. Yes, it is a bit stressful. Okay. Um, so what I'm doing now is just, so this crease line here is where, no, wait, that's wrong. Let's see, I almost made a mistake. Wait. This crease line here is where the original hem was. And I want to raise that by two inches. So two inches isn't a lot, should I make it shorter? Ugh, any other uh, Libras over here in the size of Libras? Libras? Oh, that's nice. That, um, our local college has a sewing shop where you can take garments to be altered. They said they'll be happy to pin my hems with me in them. That's really nice. Uh, what inspired your sewing on YouTube journey? Well, I literally just thought it might be useful for someone else who was starting to sew to see my mistakes that they didn't make them <laughs> and that, that's it that's pretty much it but I also felt like I really wanted to give back because I have learned everything on YouTube and like I also feel like watching YouTube's made me think that maybe I could do it too so you know when I make things I want people to think oh you know I can do it too kind of thing um yeah oh I'm so behind on the chat I'm going to do starter bodice pattern. Uh, oh, Debbie asks, I need a good starter bodice pattern. Any suggestions? Once made, it would be my go-to pattern. Do you mean a modern pattern or like a Victorian? Because if you're looking for a Victorian pattern, I highly, highly recommend the, um, I think it's like an 1860s bodice pattern by Truly Victorian. Because basically Victorian bodices didn't really change much infrastructure like they basically have two darts in the front and that's it um so i've actually altered that bodice pattern to be both an 1890s thing and an 1840s thing so i think it's a pretty versatile pattern um morticia adams that's cool regency witch well funny you should find, you should mention a historical witch stay tuned for october on the channel did I complete my degree? I have completed my degree. Um, I had did my dissertation. That was the last thing I had to do, but I don't have the grade back yet. Uh, so the way, it's a little bit different from America, so we didn't have any exams or anything. It was just this one last assignment that I needed to do. And uh, that's been handed in like over a month ago now, and I still don't have the grade. I don't know how long it will have to wait, but it's quite stressful to wait. 
<sighs> Lady Dimitris Group, that sounds cool. Oh, scroll back down. Did you do costumes? Uh, I usually wear my Ren Fair Pride garb. Love it. Love Ren Fair. I that's one of the things about America that I really wish were more common here is I really want more Ren Fairs. I only know of one and it's not enough. And I had some message this year. So I'd be really happy if there were more fairs like in America. Mm, to send you. Sophie from House Moving Castle! I love that! Oh, I love Sophie. Actually, the dress I made, I made like a 1890s like Victorian working dress kind of thing. It was absolutely inspired by Sophie's um, from House Moving Castle. Oh, a bit of thread or a pin went flying over my left shoulder. That sounds about right, to be honest. Probably either or both. Supposed to be Morticia Adams. Oh, probably an excuse to do a historical costume. Yeah. Um, Rishi's horoscope. Useless for decision making. <laughs> Hello from Greece. Hi. Love Greece. H high on my list of places to go to soon. Oh, this is a really good question. Do you ever feel like you're a child dressing up? I do when I wear historical clothing. Discuss that in the comments. I'm going to give my opinion. Uh, yes. <laughs> Depends on the kind of stuff you're wearing. Um, I definitely feel like, especially because I used to do a lot of cosplay, I definitely feel like I'm now, I now feel too old, like for some of some cosplays. I mean, that obviously depends on your, on yourself. I don't think anyone's ever too old to do anything. Um, but it depends on how you feel and what makes you comfortable. The thing about wearing historical costume for me, it's not necessarily that I feel like a, a child dressing up, is that I'm usually a person that likes to lay low and wearing anything that's not fast fashion mainstream anywhere outside like a, even in a bubbling urban center can, you know, obviously just be calling attention um, because it's not even bad attention, you know, I've never had anyone be unkind towards me because of it but it is attention nevertheless so yeah that's my two thoughts gun sack sewing challenge dress yep look excited to see that handmade witch outfit Ooh, that sounds cool 1950 sally love it um lady justice that sounds cool Ren Fairs, Jack Sparrow and Elizabeth Swan. <laughs> I've had her, you know, her like burgundy dress, the like parrot dress that she gets from the ship. That's on my to make list for like a few years now. And I really, really want to get around to it. But it's really, I find it really hard to motivate myself to make things that I definitely don't have any reason to wear. So like with conventions still not being, you know, safe and stuff. I probably wouldn't have a reason to wear it for a long time. But I kind of really want to make it. I just feel like it's such a cool costume. And it might look really cool. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Even if you don't like Halloween, it might be a good time to just have fun with it. I don't really... I don't really get Halloween to be honest because it's never been a thing. Like in Portugal, we didn't really have it as a thing. And then over here, it's not really that big of a thing. Even in London, I never got anyone trick or treating on my door. Um, oh. Just lay nice and pretty. Yep, this is completely right. Um, Sarah says, it really does take a lot of wearing to feel like it's your clothing instead of a costume. Completely agree. I feel like I'm going really slow. It's already been 40 minutes and we haven't actually done it. <laughs> There's no feds in the UK, Emily. 
just be yourself. Yeah, I mean, I always find that when you like when you are yourself or when you dress like you want to, you just feel so much better about yourself. Like your confidence and your comfort and stuff will go up. It might be a little jarring at first, but eventually it will get better. That's one of the things I like about history bounding is that you can make classical stuff very wearable. Oh, why did that make this hem so long, so light? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. When you do dress up, it does like call more attention. Um, it's just something you that I have to deal with. I'm sorry, I don't have a magic cure for it either. I just try to, you know, do my best with it. Yeah, contrast with your friends and stuff who don't dress in the same way, absolutely. Dress on my to-do list. Oh, oh my god, it's going so fast. <laughs> Find that very cute. Um, see ya, how oh, good to see you in white. Uh, experiencing where one favorite period changes in a pattern of going backwards, so from 1960s to 1910 and now 1860. Yeah, I, I wonder how far back you'll go. <laughs> Maybe medieval is like your next, your next stop. <laughs> I feel like I'm always all over the place, like I like most centuries. I don't really do past 1910, it just kind of loses interest for me and the 1920s are not flattering for a mirror show. Do you have a pumpkin in your window? People will knock. No pumpkin, no trick or treaters. This is true. I did hear this rumor and we did scoop out some pumpkins. The first, I think it was the first Halloween we were in this country and um, no one came knocking anyone. I think, I feel like it also depends on where you are. Um, where you are in the city as well. I do really love carving out pumpkins. That's a lot of fun. Commercializing every holiday, this is true. Um, yeah, I love... Ooh, ooh. Halloween for me is great because it's socially acceptable to play dress up, this is true. All historical for every day. Yeah, I mean, you really don't have to do all historical every day. Like, I feel like that's... Even, like, for me, that's a step too far. <laughs> like, I, I couldn't do that. It's just you know, like modern ideas of comfort and also modern ideas of laziness. I'm so lazy, you guys. Can you imagine getting dressed in like 15 layers on a daily basis? So lazy. Way too lazy for that Victorian life. <laughs> um, I'm currently re-engineering my wardrobe to better accommodate my disability needs to reflect my love for historical clothing. It's funny how so many fixes for modern problems can be found in older designs. Yeah, absolutely. I saw someone talking about this the other day, about how, like, sometimes things are just forgotten, and then we, like, rediscover, like, a historical technique or whatever, and we just end up thinking, oh, this is new. And actually, people have been doing that since, ever since the day. Things get lost. So many things get lost in time. It's kind of crazy. I'm glad you're finding um, some tips and adaptability tricks. America's absolutely crazy about Halloween. The stores have had their Christians for months. I do, I will say, I do like a theme. So it's nice, like, I love doing, like, thematic parties or whatever. So I feel like I would do a thematic Halloween party just to chill with friends and watch some films or whatever. That's my kind of Halloween. Not really a thing in the Netherlands. Yeah, dressing up parties. It might just be a good excuse to hang out with your friends, you know? I think we Americans look for any reason to celebrate and dress up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest, dressing up is the best, so I really do not uh, judge that at all. Halloween is nice to honour the dead, but also dress up and have fun. I'm starting on a Regency wedding coat to wear as an everyday coat to get away with outer wear. This is true. That's a really good call. Should I make a wedding coat? <laughs> I already have too many projects, you guys! If you don't like it, don't look. 
that's a good thing to say as well. Las Vegas, Nevada, 18th century clothing, you can help. A little more modern looking with certain textiles and colors for being Las Vegas. No one cares. <laughs> that's good. Um, oh, I'm really glad to hear that. 18th century is hard as well. I, I finally, now that I've finished my stays, uh, one of the next things I want to do is some 18th century stuff. I don't know, I just keep, there's so many projects, they just keep getting pushed back. Oh, well, I guess this is a good time to uh, plug my Patreon. Uh, I'm going to put up a poll soon on there. Um, so a certain tier gets to vote on polls for my de next project, because as I mentioned, I'm a Libra and I can't make decisions. So I actually really do like that feature on Patreon. Sometimes it's just easier because like I'm equal, equally excited about all of these projects. I just can't decide which one goes first. And so Patreon's really helpful for that. Uh, there's a link in the description box if you're interested. Um, if I have any patrons hanging out here, hi, thank you for coming. Uh, Emily Dickinson, love that. Oh, I love a good literature, lit literary costume. Uh, that's a good one. I hear ha it also with like literary historical figures, you can go with a historical costume, very good. I wear a hat every time I go out. At first it felt weird. Yes, oh my God, can we bring hats back? Because I really want to get into hats, but it feels like no one else wears hats. So I always feel really like um, self-conscious, I guess. But I feel like hats are really cool. If you're having a bad hair day, wear a hat, sort it. You know what would have been a good idea was if I had trimmed before I did this. You know what? This is something that I sometimes don't show in my videos, is uh, me making reckless decisions. We're getting out the rotary cutter. Uh, agree, I bought a corset but never actually wear it on a daily basis. Yeah, corsets are a good one because, I mean, obviously they are effort to put on and sometimes you're just like, who's got time for that? <laughs> Well, at least I am like that sometimes. Do I have to turn this off by two inches or one? Two? I see two. Is there a better way for me to do this that's less chaotic? New oh, Australians do New Year's fancy dress parties. I'm not sure about Halloween. That's cool. Lord of the Rings party for my 18th birthday. You sound like a cool person. I totally agree. That's so cool. Uh, what is the biggest dream project you want to do? Oh, there are quite a few like historical dresses that I'd like to get around to, but it's just hard, man. Like when you've got like a dream project, you're always wondering, like, am I really good enough for that? Like, am I gonna make it justice? And then I think one of the most disheartening things is when you spend so much time working on like a historical project, only for it to like not come out like you want it to. And then it's just really depressing. And I don't know, I have a bunch of like extant garments saved on my phone. <laughs> Maybe I'll share them with you. Um, one of the things I really wanted to get into was to try and recreate paintings. So like, um, they're just some really nice paintings and I, th I thought it'd be really cool to try and recreate them in the sense of, you know, I make the costume I wear, I kind of take a photo in a similar location kind of thing. I think that'd be really cool. But the problem is those are obviously big projects. I wouldn't even know how to find like interiors and things for things. Um, yeah, I'll share, I'll share some of my dream costumes on Instagram after this stream. I'll do it on my stories and then save it as a highlight or something so you can all see. That's a good thing, yeah. Uh, my sibling and I are going to our own medieval run for a magical creature all time he goes for Halloween. Love it. Original characters, that's totally, totally a cool thing to do. Uh, in case it's not very clear what I'm doing because I'm not sure how the stream is. I'm just using my rosary cutter to chop off two inches off this hem 
because then I'm going to turn the other bit inwards and sew it down like that. Yes. Um, I don't usually like doing this very narrowly. I actually quite like doing a thick hem because that gives it some weight, which makes it flare a bit better as well. And also it does help when you're walking for it to like not stick to your legs or your feet too, too much. Hello from Hendersonville. That's not how I say it. Hendersonville. Having a velvet cape for my niece for Halloween. Oh, that's so nice. Lovely. I love velvet. I just love it. It's such a great textile. Awful to work with. But so gorgeous. Totally worth it. Oh, the Ever After Dream Dress. I can't believe I didn't even mention that. I guess because I'm working on it, I didn't even think about it. Um, I am still working on that. Thank you so much for bringing that to my attention. Um, in case you've missed that video, I'm not surprised follow along. Um, I am making the Ever After, the Breathe Dress from the film Ever After. And I've been making it for, I think, two years now. Basically, I started making it because I thought I was going to wear it to a convention. <laughs> I started making it in march for a may convention and when i started embroidering the skirt panels because i couldn't find any textile that was similar and i thought it would be totally doable to just embroider them uh the first panel took me three weeks uh working on it every evening for about three to four hours it took me three weeks to do and at that point i realized well there's no way you're gonna make this for the convention and so I ended up making an Elwyn costume for that convention and that breathe dress, although I still really want to do it because I did have all the materials ready and everything and I do love the design. It just kind of got put in the back burner because it is a lot of just embroidery that I have to do. Embroidery, 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 embroidering forever. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it will happen. Um, I can give you a little update on that actually. I'm currently embroidering the last three panels of the skirt. Two of them are half finished. So I'm hoping to have that embroidery done by the end of the year. I don't know. <laughs> oh, um, and then I can start working on the rest. But there's a bunch of other embroidery that I need to do that's not even on the skirt. Like the sleeves need embroidery and the bodice needs embroidery and everything needs embroidery. Need like a little a little army of knees to do that embroidery. Um, sorry, I've kept talking. I forget to check the check the chat. Uh, special treat for the most creative costumes. Oh yeah, that's cute. Do I have a favorite Worth gown? That's a very good question. I have some Worth gowns that I really like. As a designer, there are quite a few things that I really like about it about his designs. Um, I don't have a favourite one, I don't think so. Mm. Yeah, I don't think I do. Like, a lot of these designs are very cool, but I don't really have a favourite one. I feel like a lot of them are very innovative and really nice, but I don't really have one that's, like, my dream project, if you know what I mean. Um, I probably won't be making a worth going anytime soon. <laughs> A little bit of context, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I've been sewing for five years. So it's not a long time. <laughs> Handmade corset and it was so comfy and my back pain is so relieved. Whole wardrobe to hide. Yeah, uh, Judith says um, she's got a handmade, they've got a handmade corset. That's really cool. I absolutely agree that uh, a handmade corset by someone who knows how to make corsets is much better than any mass produced. Um, sort of factory made corsets, even if it's not necessarily made to your measurements. Um, usually it's just that they know so much more about fit that the the purpose of mass manufactured corsets in factories today is not to support you or to wear you, it's to make like a cool costume. So, you know, it's just how a different pur purpose. Uh, men do, well. I'm really loving the chat. You guys are so nice. And it's so nice to actually get to talk to you. Because sometimes, like, sometimes comments get lost or whatever. And it's just really nice to know that you are people. <laughs> sometimes I think it's only robots <laughs> on the other side of YouTube. But no, there are people. And that's really nice and heartwarming. 
and it's already been nearly an hour and I haven't even started sewing. I obviously need to shut up and get on with it. Oh my goodness. Um, what are you going to do now your studies are finished? What kind of job? Are you a full-time YouTuber? Um, I'm not sure, Charlotte, to be honest. Um, I'm a little lost. I am currently trying to figure out what to do with my life. Um, I don't really know. <sighs> I don't really know. I feel like once I have the grade for this final degree, um, and then my graduation for the degree is in December, I feel like I can then like properly close this chapter of my life, I think. Um, and I also want to move back down to London. So I feel like once that's completed, sorry if this is too much information, I'm just rambling. Um, but I feel like once this chapter is like fully concluded, I can actually properly think about what I want to do. I don't really know what I want to do. I think working in a museum could be cool. Um, but currently at the moment, um, currently at the moment, there's not a lot of museum jobs because it's been a, <laughs> been a rough year for museums. So, I think I'll obviously start job hunting if I can. Something in a museum would be really cool, but it's really hard. It's a really hard field to get into. Um, anyone else wearing your historical clothing on Halloween as your costume? <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's one of the few opportunities you might have to wear them. So I've been thinking about this a lot where I think I won't be doing like for conventions and stuff. I won't be doing cosplay properly anymore. I'll be doing historical inspired versions because I just enjoy it so much more. And then that means that I can wear the stuff out, even if it is to conventions, like at least they get to see sunshine. Absolutely agree. Oh, um, potentially unpopular worth opinion, but I do like the sense of the science a lot more than the fathers. I find it to be a lot more creative later on. That's a very good point. Um, my timeline on the House of Worth is a bit fuzzy, even though I did read a book. It was a long time ago. Um, but I'm fairly certain he started in the 1860s, Charles Worth himself, and then was his son by like the turn of the century or something like that? The thing is, a lot of his more 1860s, 1870s dresses don't survive. There's only like, I've only been able to find a handful, but maybe I'm not looking in the right places. Um, so there is not a lot of his like actual work to survive, but his son does for sure have a lot of creativity. Also, is that an unpopular opinion? I wear my stays and corset a lot and my Edwardian medieval stuff too. You know what? I'm so converted to kirtles. Like, kirtles are just so comfy and so cute. And you can make them. Basically, I want one in every color. They're the original dress, you know? Um, many non worth gowns are just as gorgeous. I agree, Glory. Um, Absolutely, there are so many other designers that are really, really good as well. Um, so, yeah. I don't know, I feel like Worth obviously was a very popular brand. And, uh, and he does have, like, the house does have some cool designs, but there are other designs out there who are really cool. There was this designer, I can't remember her name, was it Paquin? Paquin? I think she might have been French, Paquin? Hmm. And if you're looking for Edwardian, look up Lucille, because she's got some cool stuff. I took a book out from the library about her, and uh, she's really cool. Um, so there are definitely uh, options out there. I just feel like Worth got a lot of, you know, because he was, like, endorsed by all the arist aristocrats and, like, all the royal families and stuff. Okay, sewing point. We have cut the hem. Well, I have, I have cut him. And then, so this is the new fold here. This is the new hem. And then the cut edge, I'm just tucking underneath here. And now I'm just gonna sew it down. So usually what I do at this point is I go over to the uh, ironing board and I iron it into place. And that usually means I don't have to baste it or pin it. I mean, you should, because it just makes it nicer. But I can't be bothered, so we're not doing that. Uh, and also my ironing board is off camera. And off to the side so I don't really want to leave you alone. <laughs> so instead we are just going to sew it and then give it a good pressing after. 
So I know there hasn't been a video about this curse at all, but I just wanted to tell you really quickly about how I sew it, sewed it, sewed it. Um, I'll switch over to here. So I thought it was really cool to sew this with linen on linen because I love linen. But unfortunately, I couldn't find any lilac linen thread. So what I did was, oh, this is crazy and I hated it and I don't know why I kept doing it, but here we are. I took scraps of the linen. This is all going to be in a video if you don't care. Um, I think I will end up posting a video about this. I just need to edit it and finish it and make it nice. Um, what I did was I took my scraps after I cut out the kirtle and then I took like one tiny little strand and I peeled it out like this. And bam, you've got sewing thread that matches your garment. Now, I bought this linen, <laughs> this linen real cheap uh, at Goldhawk Road. And after I started sewing it, I realized why it was real cheap. The quality of this linen is not good. And I say that because um, what I usually did was I waxed the thread as much as I could because this thread, as sewing thread, breaks just by you looking at it. There was not a single time where I threaded my needle to sew this dress, this kirtle, where my thread didn't break. It's probably one of the most frustrating things I ever had to sew. Um, but I kept doing it, and because I did it, I stuck it out for all of this dress, I don't really want to give up now. So here we are. We're going to do a really simple and plain whip stitch. I can't even really tell if my camera is in focus, but I hope it is. Do let me know if it isn't. Mm, okay, well, let's hope it is. Well, you've seen me do a whip stitch on the channel. <sighs> Poor freaking... Ugh, you see what I mean? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I did not miss this. Maybe this is why I didn't end up posting about the project, because I was so disillusioned with it. It's really poor quality linen. Um, we'll go back to this one. Uh, I've missed the chat for a little bit. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, someone knows Pecan. Cool, cool, cool. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the French designers. They're very good, too. The name brand isn't always made better than the other brands. They're just the most well-known. Oh, thank you so much, Rhea. I hope you have a good day. I'm sorry I missed when you left. Currently working on a lot of over curtain dress. That lines are worth the sound of music. Nice. Have you tried the Lynn McMaster's hat making patterns? I picked threads from cheap modern linen. Oh, yep. It was very testing. Don't worry. I don't, I'm not that patient. I just, I'm, I think I'm stubborn. So once I was like, I'm doing this, then I was, I'm doing this. So I think I'm just stubborn. But yeah, this, this was really, really hard to sew. And I think it's why it took me so much longer. It's because every time I took a stitch, the linen just fell apart. Yeah, it was very annoying. Do not recommend. Well, I mean, you can do it if it's good quality linen. But, you know, I was trying to find the most affordable linen. So I wasn't, I wasn't that fast, to be honest. Oh, no problem. Um, you can do it for other fabrics as well. Uh, polyester will be a lot harder, but things like silk, I've seen people do, where you just pick out like a silk thread and then you've got something that matches. It's good for hems because um, because your thread will match the hem so exactly that you won't, like, it'll be much harder to notice it, the stitches. Um, trying to keep my... I don't know, whenever I, well, this happens a lot when I'm filming as well, is I'll start sewing over here, and I'll end up sewing over here. <laughs> Does this happen to anyone else? <laughs> it's very hard if you're trying to find a YouTuber. Uh, what kind of jobs are out there for people like us, uh, who love historical sewing, but maybe don't know what to do with that skill? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, not a lot, I'll be honest. So I think 
it depends on what kind of historical sewing you want to be. Like, do you want to be something that is more dress history related or something that is more making related? Because obviously theatre, opera, um, film, they always need period, period styled costumes. So if you're into the making, there is a future there. It is quite hard to break into. But I think from what I've heard, once you like have connections and you know how to get the jobs and stuff, it, it gets a little easier, but it's obviously, you know, contract work is very unstable as well, and often very long hours and very underpaid. I'm sorry, this is going to be really depressing, um, but that's the reality. If you're looking for more dress history jobs, there are a bunch of different things. You could, if you're into academia, you could get into academia. Um, you could try to, you know, do a master's, do a PhD, teach at university, that kind of thing. Um, oh, if you're into making, there's obviously living history places that um, might be hiring. Um, or sometimes museums want replicas or like dress up sections as well. Um, museums is another good place for jobs. I mean, it's hard, really hard to get into, but it's another place. Um, often, you know, like if you've got the technical still skills, tech, textile conservation is a thing or um, Textile curation, where you look after the collection and do a sessioning and collection care and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not the most straightforward field, and often it's a very underpaid field, so it's quite hard. Um, history bounding adds such an aesthetic to life. Whenever I want to work on writing a story, I dress in the style of the characters and person in a cafe. That's really cool. Um, that's a good thing to do. Um, is this the diet pill linen from fabric store? It is not. Um, that linen I found is much better quality than this. This is a linen I bought in Goldhawk Road from like a, a local store. And I think it only cost me either five or seven pounds a meter, which for the UK is very cheap. Um, if you're from America, you are blessed with good linen resources for much cheaper linen. It's very, very expensive here in the UK um, and often quite hard to get. Um, dress history in the making. I hope I've helped a little bit with that um, question. I'm afraid it's not necessarily the answer you wanted. But yeah, I think that's the, really, the reality. There are other things you can do, of course. If you're into dress history, um, or if you're a historian in general, you can become a consultant. I've heard of people who do that. There are people that will do research for projects like film or TV or anything like that. Um, where they do the, re the historical research for those projects. So it's basically just doing historical research, which actually sounds really good, but I'm not sure how like livable that is, like if it's a very uncertain field work. Uh, Rebecca says, people always ask me why I don't make a job out of sewing. And to be honest, I love having it as a hobby. I'm very worried I might end up hating it as a job long term. And I can just tell you that is exactly how I feel as well. <laughs> um, yeah, I really do not want to be sewing every day, all day on projects that I don't get to pick as well. Um, I feel like that could be really, really exhausting. And usually they are very long hours. Um, and often you don't really have the time to do things properly or like you'd want to. It's just all very stressful. Um, Birta says, I am in the film industry, in the camera department, and everything you said is too true. Long hours and pays men and appreciated, I'm afraid. I'm really sorry to hear that's your experience as well. That is what I've heard. Like, it, They are hard, hard fields. Um, I guess you have to really love your job <laughs> to be in them. Um, but obviously it must be really rewarding as well if you see something you've made on like a film or on stage or something. I feel like that'd be really cool. Should I get my hand? Oh, can you still see? Let me check. Yeah, cool. No problem. I'm sorry, it's not like a good output. <laughs> um, I'm sure a lot of people have had more luck. Um, but yeah, I just feel like having tempered expectations or hopes is a bit, a bit better. Again, I've not actually worked in any of these fields. This is just things I've heard. 
because obviously I've shown some interest and in was talking to people about them. But yeah, that's the general impression that I have. Um, my stitches started out really small, but they're getting larger. <laughs> stops me sewing for money is because people are shocked at how much it can cost. Alexa, you are so right. Absolutely. Like, if that's happened to me many times where people asked, oh, can you make me this costume or that costume? And then I tell them how much it would be with the cost of materials and like basic minimum wage for the hours. I'm also a very slow seamstress. Um, but for the hours that it takes me to make it and they're like, mm. Oh, never mind. That's crazy. And I'm like, yes. Yes, it is crazy. <laughs> um, hi, Jocelyn. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Uh, I'm not sure how much longer I'll be going for, but it, I mean, I kind of wanted to finish this hem, but it's taken me four freaking ever. You see what I mean about me being the slowest person on earth? But I am like, I'm very chatty. This has been really nice. For a dress, even though I know it's worth, yeah. It is quite hard, and it's also because people, well, I don't want to create any controversy in the comments, but um, fast fashion, I think, has just made it made us devalue work and clothes. Um, because we can get things so quickly, so, so cheaply now, like, I think we just don't value things as much anymore. Um, well, some of us do, like really original pieces and things like that, feel like this meditating thing. But yeah, it's also really hard because, you know, we all have bills to pay. So sometimes it's really hard to justify spending X amount of money on something that is, you know, really nice and really well made and things. But, you know, that's, that's money that you don't have to spend on rent anymore. <laughs> um, Impressive. Yeah. I've worked at a costume department for a Dutch film. It was an experience, not one I intend on repeating, but very interesting. Ooh. I hope it wasn't too bad. Um, that's interesting to hear that maybe film sets are kind of the same across different countries. Um, also, it was much faster to sew with the tailor hat. I don't know why I didn't get it from the beginning. If you don't have one, I highly recommend getting a tailor's hand, by the way. I didn't want to spend the £10 on one when I first um, when I first started sewing. So instead, I decided to make my own and spend £10 on materials instead. That makes no sense. Uh, to give some fabric or buttons for the holidays and birthdays. Yes. Oh, yes. But unfortunately, I never get any. <laughs> uh, seeing jobs can, uh, sewing jobs can include working for companies that make costumes. In the USA, we have conventions and rent fairs with many such companies. Also working for historical tourist sites is a great option. Absolutely. Keep those in mind. I think the USA in general has a lot more opportunities for this kind of thing because I think reenactment or even just, you know, costume wearing as support for something else like a museum or like an activity or an experience or whatever is a lot more common like most like it's so weird because the UK has so many castles so many historic sites but only a handful really has any costumed entertainers or anything like that um and that's obviously because it's quite you know expensive because you've got to commission someone to make the costumes and maintain them and replace them and yeah I know there is one company in particular in the UK that does it um so I think the USA is a bit friendlier in that sense uh, I got my certification as the seamstress and immediately changed my career path I still do a couple of alteration projects for alternative fashion friends and make stuff do <laughs> That's really interesting. Greetings from the Netherlands. Working on a cross-stitch project as I'm still waiting for closures for my 1890s cape. 
I did one little bit of cross stitching uh, this year and I got really into it. Um, I absolutely want to do more. I'm so impressed as well by, like, I messed up a few stitches because it was so hard for me to count. <laughs> Numbers just confused my head. Um, but cross stitching can be so much fun and it's also really satisfying the way the threads show the little square. Do you feel that too? I just feel it like it's really satisfying. Um, Turning off working full time, yes. For Christmas, ah, oh, yay, I'm glad you got a Taylor Ham and a Sleeve Ham set, that's good. Um, we get film productions from all over to shoot here and I can pretty much vouch that most sets, not all but most, are long hours and a stressful environment. Ugh, can be rewarding to see the results. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry to hear that, it's so hard when your job is stressful but it's also the thing you love to do. Um, currently working on my 1890s winter jacket and was missing someone to sew with. Ah, oh, I'm so glad to hear that, Saskia. Um, that's basically me as well. Because I think also sewing can be quite like isolating because obviously you need to be shut in a room for like quite a long time and you need to be in a weird level where you can focus. Like there's not a lot going on around you. Um, but you know, you're, it's boring and stuff. So your brain is still picking away. Um, so it's really nice to have someone to talk to. I've been sewing for five years and none of my friends actually, like people in person, ever got into sewing with me. Um, so I've, I've never had any company for sewing, so I might do more of these. It's quite nice, I will say. And I'm really enjoying talking to all of you. <gasps> Greetings from Japan! Okay, I know you probably hear this from everyone, but Japan is like my favorite place on earth. I went there in 2018 and I just, I low-key want to move there, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna lie, uh, but I'm 100% planning a trip to go again as soon as it's safe. <laughs> oh, I just love it so much. Um, Bertha says, uh, it baffles me how people voluntarily go on shows like Project Runway and such, I'd always be on the cusp of a heart attack. <laughs> That is so relatable. I actually just started watching Project Runway and I had like a, I was borderline having a breakdown the other day because I watched Project Runway and I think I watched three or four episodes, maybe more, um, but like, you know, all I was doing was binding a vest. It wasn't that much work, but it took me like six hours and in those six hours I watched like six episodes of Project Runway and they made 70 outfits. Oh, yeah. I just found it really demotivating how quickly they can make things and how I'll never be like that. <laughs> but yeah, I missed the Project Runway craze when it was first around because I wasn't into selling until five years ago. So, catching up on the trend. Um, oh no. Oh no. I lost the bit that I was peeling for my thread. Uh, ah, here we go. Uh, I'm going to have to go soon. Oh, <laughs> that's a really cute idea. If you've got family members that can sew, that's pretty nice. I hope you have a good day. And find the country. Loving the chat, yeah. I'm so glad you're enjoying it too. Um, yeah! Aw, oh, you guys are so lovely. This is so nice. Um, I'm really enjoying this time. And I'm actually getting stuff done. <gasps> Which is good. I probably would have put off re this for another... Because it's like a spring kirtle. I'm not even going to wear it, but... Also, I was way ambitious with what I planned to do in this life. I have this kirtle. And then I need to fix the neckline of this still. I have another kirtle that I want to rehem and redo the sleeves. And what else? Uh, I have a, a shirt that has a couple of holes that need darning. I was like, oh, do you think this is enough? Is this enough? Like, I don't know. I don't know how long we're going to be on for. Is this enough content? I'm still, well, it's been an hour and 20 minutes and I haven't even finished this hem. Ugh, overestimated. 
last felt seen of the shirt you've been making. Good job, Judith. You're way faster than I am. <laughs> and pick a gathered waistband for the third time. Oh, gathering is really hard, I will say. Like, it, it seems easy, but making those gathers look nice, impossible. Nearly impossible. Oh, I hate this thread. Why am I doing this to myself? Why? Oh, do you want to know something else that, like, makes this, um, this whole sewing with the thread of the dress thing even more ridiculous is that after I started sewing this, I actually found a perfect color match in my thread stash. <laughs> but I was just like, oh no, I won't use it anymore because I'm doing this, um, I'm sewing it with it, so I'm fine, it's a whole thing. And so I actually have perfectly easy thread to use over there, but will I use it? But no, let's see how long this takes. <laughs> If you enjoy that, I'd also recommend making the cut. Yes, Amazon Prime. I've heard about that. Um, I think I'm, I think I'm still on season six of Project Runway. So once that's over, um, I will uh, have a look at making the cut. Thank you. Raise your hand if you have multiple projects going concurrently. You know what? Weirdly, I don't because I'm the kind of person that likes doing everything in order. And that's gonna sound so weird. But like, I I watch all of my, and I, I like doing things start to finish. So like, I don't watch TV shows concurrently either. If I start a TV show, I'm gonna watch all of it. And only then can I move on. I don't read more than one book at the same time. Also can't do that. I don't know what it is about me, but yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> the thread is gonna break. That is going to break you guys. <laughs> it broke. <sighs> Good lord. Um, yeah, so I'm the kind of person that does things start to finish and I can't bring myself to do it any other way. So I actually only do one project at a time. Unless it is like a, like this kind of thing where I'm just fixing something. <laughs> 10 projects, oh dear. One of my biggest regrets when it comes to getting certified was doing it in general dressmaking and not doing it in the smaller field of Bunad. Ah, oh, sorry if I said it wrong, Bunad. That's really cool. Bunad look awesome. Um, hi, everyone. Hey. Mock up for a pinafore. Awesome. I love pinafores. I think I should make a pinafore, right? I don't think I actually have a proper one. Like a, you know, a Pinafore is like a, a dress with a, a bib like collar, right? I think they are so cute. And I think I should definitely make one because it sounds adorable. I guess my like um, everyday cursal dress is kind of like a pinafore. Should I make some pinafores? Let me know. <laughs> um, something that you like to put on for AB. Ah! Uh, Dylan asks, do you have anything that you like to put on for amb ambiance while working? I often put on Pride of Prejudice or Ghibli film to listen to while sewing. That's a really good tip. Um, for sewing, I usually always have TV on, like a TV show. Usually I've watched pretty much every TV show that's available on a streaming server. <laughs> so the point where we watched all of Grey's Anatomy. Yep, all 16 seasons or whatever it is. It's kind of crazy. Um, the other thing that I like is sometimes, so I've realized that whenever I'm, I have a TV show on, I am much slower in my sewing. So if I really need to get down to business, I uh, I only put music on. <laughs> and my personal preference is, I like listening to the Portuguese radio, but I understand that's not really applicable. <laughs> um, but yeah. I find I'm more productive with music. The other thing I found is that um, <laughs> everyone says yes, pinafores. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's put let's put some pinafores on the on the menu. Uh, I'm not sure what an elephant's water sign. Mm, yeah, pinafores. Okay. <laughs> That's on the list. Um, and I can no longer. Oh, 
So when I was trying to do work for university, I couldn't have uh, something as involving as a TV show on because I found that too distracting, uh, especially when I was trying to read. But what I did find were some really cool YouTube channels that do like uh, themed ambiance. So in particular, I really enjoyed their Lord of the Rings playlists. <laughs> so it's literally just like a two or three hour video of ambiance of like, you can do like um, Rivendell or, you know, the Shire kind of vibes. And I just loved it. And I found it was like the perfect ambiance. Uh, or alternatively, there's lots of channels that do like a Dark Academia playlist, a Cottagecore playlist, or, you know, raining in the library kind of playlist. <laughs> or like cozy fire in the cottage kind of playlist. Oh, I love it. Um, I found them to be really great when I was trying to get work done. I also don't like silence. I don't know if you can tell from the fact that I've been talking solidly for an hour and a half, but I don't, I don't love silence. <laughs> Pinafore sew along. Mm, would you be interested in that? I was thinking about doing some sew along, but I didn't know if anyone would be interested. We could do a pinafore sew along. Let me know if you're into that. Uh, I want to try. Uh, I want to try Morgan Donner's medieval kirtle drafting and also pinafores. So that's one project. The body fits okay so far, but I need help with the straps because my shoulders are uneven. The shoulder bit of the kirtle is really hard. Um, I found an adjustment that really helps me because the straps keep falling off my shoulders, and that is to like literally chop off, chop off the strap, and then just angle it inwards. Tape and just fill the any gaps again. Really worked, um, and it's very, very helpful. My first cursor just keeps falling off my shoulders, and this one doesn't. So I've gotten a little better at it. Um, I also highly recommend Morgan Donner's tutorial. I've used it. I used it myself for the first cursor one made, and it was really, really good. Oh, Skyrim ones. Yep, absolutely. Such a vibe. Um, Skyrim sort of ambiance um, videos. Am I making my stitches too neat? Because it's kind of a waste of time. <laughs> uh, in Deep Keep's YouTube channel also has such a good talking videos about the Lord of the Rings lore and backstory. Ooh, I'll check that out actually because I read the Silmarillion ages ago. I have this problem where I actually have like short term memory. So I can't remember any of it, um, but I'd like to remember it because I did spend the time reading that freaking thick book. Um, not thick as in size, but thick as in hard to read. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you want to sew along. Okay, that's a good idea. Okay, I'll try to figure out the logistics of that um, for a pin for a sew along. I actually need to work through my fabric stash, so I'll have to find something in there that works. Pinafores can be so cute and comfy. That's such a good idea. Thank you, guys. Um, there's a good free website called My Noise that does a lot of white noise tracks. They do music playlists on Spotify. I've used a website like that before, um, where you can kind of mix your own white noise. Like you can add rain or wind or, you know, whatever, stuff like that. And they're really cool. You can basically make your own, your own track. Very cool. Witcher ambiance, ah, oh, yeah, all the fantasy, fantasy and ambiance um, videos are, I think, the best for sure. Love it. Oh, this is slow progress. This is, I want to show you how much I've done. I've only done this. I don't know, like a thirty to forty centimeters, maybe. Maybe. I think the hem might be closer to like three or four meters. <laughs> Hooray for me. Also, whenever I've got little lumps of fabric, hang on, I'll switch just to show you. I want this to be helpful as well. Uh, if you're doing hems and you have like, if you have a curved hem, you will have extra fabric like this. It is totally fine. The Victorians did it, the Edwardians did it. It's totally fine to just pleat up that excess and sew it down. Like, if it's a fabric that you can shrink down, great. 
Most of them are too hard to do, so just pin that down and sew it in. Um, so I've cut the whole top off the curl and I'm just putting literally straps on because then I've wrapped it and knocked up the whole curl. I was totally guessing about the shoulders anyway, yeah. I mean, I find that I'd learned a lot from my first curl, so hopefully um, this will teach you a lot about the construction too. Um, that's, that's basically what sewing is, isn't it? It's learning from mistakes. Um, and that's absolutely the way I've learned as well. Uh, done patching the jeans. Good job, Charlotte. All right, have a good evening. A flannel bed sheet that I want to make a pinafore out of. Good call. Fall winter vibes. Amazing. Maybe I should go look at my bed sheets. <laughs> See if there's any flannel that needs snowing out. <laughs> Good. Just gonna walk the stitching. Valheim ambience music, very soothing, absolutely. Although you can get some really impressive vibes with the Vikings. <laughs> um, I used to watch the show. I don't know if you guys have seen the show, but the show Vikings. Um, some really good intense soundtrack as well. Yeah, historically correct, absolutely. Um, I've heard about it in, well, not heard. <laughs> I'll give it to her instead, but I've read about it. Um, in like little books and seen it on hems as well. Like, it's just natural. Where is the access fabric gonna go? Um, Thank you for the reassurance that the fabric can be pleated down. I've yet to master something that is called facings. They never seem to match up and need to be pleated in various places. Facings are not magic. Don't worry about it. I absolutely have, um, have to pleat down facings as well. Um, the thing you can do is if you cut your facing, like your hem facing on the bias, it helps a lot. So that's what I've been, what I do for skirts, particularly when I've got a thick facing, like I like to give like body to the hem, cut it on the bias. I, sometimes for me, it's really hard because I, it feels like wasting fabric. Um, cause it's not the most efficient way of cutting. There are some tutorials online to make it more efficient, but yeah. But when you cut it on the bias and you take it in, if it's a fabric that can be steamed, if you take it to the iron, it will shrink up real good. Um, and it does help a lot, but I found that every single hem I do, if it's a curved hem in any way, it always needs the excess pleated up. It's just how life is. And I never, I thought I was doing it wrong for the longest time. I thought I was cheating. I thought I was like, surely this can't be right. I don't see anyone else doing this. Um, but I probably just didn't see this bit in the video or the, the blog or whatever. Um, yeah, don't worry about it. I absolutely feel reassured that we all have to do it. Mm, just finished the crinoline. Good job on the crinoline. Oh my god, you guys are such fast makers. How do you do this? I still haven't moved on this hem. Last winter, I've used so many bed sheets that I actually did need to fill my bed. <laughs> but clothes are more important, surely. Uh, last winter, I made two medieval. Ooh. Oops. Uh, two medieval rectangle and gore flannel house dresses with pockets, two meters of fabric if enough for full length, and sleeves if I map it out just right. I love that. I love when you have just enough fabric and it all fits really nicely and it's perfect. I love it. Duvet cover with unicorns on it. That is going to be a petticoat. Nice. For a fiver, amazing. I also would not pass up that much fabric. Also good for if it's like ever a fabric that you don't really want to use for like external things. Use it as a lining. Use it as mock-up fabric. All fabric is good fabric. All fabric has a use. <laughs> 
Today I'm working on making a rag doll with some clothes to my knees. Oh, that's so sweet! Um, I suppose having to alter any patterns because height does not help much. Oh, yeah, I have the opposite problem where I'm, I'm really short. Well, I'm average. But, um, yeah, I have the opposite problem where I have to add, um, well, not add, sorry, take away from um, most patterns. Uh, if you keep jumping projects, you never get one finished. Keep thinking about how awesome the finished product will be and how you can't wait to have it. That's really good advice. Um, it's really easy. I find this personally myself that it's really easy to get, especially with historical stuff, because there's so many options. Like, you could do any century, any decade. Um, there's so many options that easily is, it's easy, easy, easy to get overwhelmed with the amount of choice. Um... But if you start a bunch of different projects, it is unlikely you'll finish them off unless you're some kind of superhero. Um, at which point I would admire you very much. Um, anyone else have to banish your cat when sewing because she steals in the story spools of thread? My poor little girl gets so sad when I sew because she has to leave the room. I'm curious about the answer. Um, we were talking about getting a cat for a while, um, but it just sounded like too much with the sewing as well. Head is gonna break. Why am I doing this to myself? Mm. Facing sounds really fancy, also confusing. I'm wondering if you can make an instruction video on this. I can, for sure. Um, I actually have a couple of skirts planned that will have facings in, if I have enough fabric. Um, so I can definitely, in my head, make a mental note or even make a separate video about how to make facings. Um, I find them really useful, for sure, and yeah, if, if there's interest in that, I can get to it. I got a huge duvet cover, one side is brown and one is beige, for cheap as well, going to attempt a reversible walking skirt. Whoa, that's so cool. Reverse reversible stuff. Kind of boggles my brain a bit, I'll be honest. Just so impressed that people can do it. Um, that's really cool. I hope it turns out well. Five foot two inches. Oh! I think I know what that means. I'm just, I'm not very good with feet. <laughs> feet measurements. Um, I'm still a European at heart. <laughs> Uh, short but broad shoulders is tricky with patterns. Absolutely, completely relatable. We all have our different things that um, sometimes make you know ready-made patterns hard. But I think the more you practice, the more you learn about your own body, and the easier it will be to fit and recognize issues and things like that. Like fitting has always been my weakness. It's the bit I hate the most about um, garment making. So. <sighs> Definitely gotten better over the years though. I'm also running out of lights, so I think I'm gonna have to wrap up soon. Um, maybe a bit more sewing. I'm not sure how long life, like sewing live streams usually go for. Um, I feel like I could talk with you for hours, but you probably don't want that. Also, it will probably take me hours to finish the hem. Maybe I'll do another live stream next week, trying to finish the hem that I started today. <laughs> oh, why am I so slow? This is a good improvement. This is for a good cause. You'll wear this kirtle more if it fits right. <sighs> One of my cats sneaks up behind me and pulls out my thread as I'm hand sewing and started tossing and missing thread to keep them distracted. That's funny. Uh, roughly 1 meter 55. That's very close to me. I am 1 meter 64. Thank you so much for the conversion. <laughs> um, yeah, in old measurements and everything. I know I use them a lot, like inches and stuff, um, but feet is just one I do not use. And uh, so it, it's kind of just empty words to me. I can't, in my head, I can't see what that means. <laughs> 4'10", that sounds shorter, 
Um, exactly five foot. Oh, so nice to hear that you like. I've got you know people that are <laughs> like around my height around here, because I always feel like I'm the small one in the group. Five feet five. Oh, thank you, Kieran. <laughs> For anyone wondering, I'm five feet five. Five foot five. 5'10", 178 centimeters. That's as tall as I want to be. But I stopped growing when I was a teenager and uh, still disappointed about it, to be honest. Not fair. <laughs> People do an hour. I've also been in live streams are five hours. Really more just what you enjoy. That's cool. I've been really enjoying this, so. <laughs> I feel like you could do it for as long as. Uh, what is Kat working on? Well, Kat can let you know. I am working on a cartel. Uh, this cartel doesn't have a video yet, but hopefully there will be one soon. But I made this, I think, last summer, and I made it too long. Um, if you're like me, you might end up just making your hams too long, and then you end up tripping over them, and they get all dirty, and then you put off rehabbing them because it's such tedious work, and you've already done it once. Why do you have to do it again? I'm rehabbing a cartel. <laughs> it is a linen kirtle that I'm sewing with linen thread taken from the fabric itself, which is a terrible idea unless you're sewing with good quality fabric. Sorry I keep saying the same thing, but I'm still annoyed at my book decision. I could change it now. I could change it right now. I could get a different thread and make my life easier. But will I? It's stubborn. look good on people with small waist and chubby legs you sound like me I, I that's me <laughs> i really like historical silhouettes because they have full skirts and i feel like full skirts are very flattering on my body type i have no waist i have an equator <laughs> i love that that's such a good good sentence 5'9 Ugh, yeah Oh, I'm sorry, it is hard I just find it, like As long as, you, like, from the moment that you're not anywhere near standard size It's so hard to find anything that fits or looks nice That's one of the reasons why I got into sewing as well Because I wanted to make clothes that looked nice and fit nice and made me feel good I hope you two can feel that way Uh, sewing my own clothing, like a walking stash, saved me from shopping, having worn adult jeans since they showed me because long legs is no fun. Yeah, tallness can be a pain as well, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, my threads, are, my stitches are getting wider again. <laughs> I'm like, you gotta speed it up. I can feel when I pull the thread and I can feel it just getting hot and like it's gonna break now. It will break, I'm just not now. I struggle to find clothes that fit, so I sew most of it. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Sewing is, I think, really um, empowering in that sense um, that you can just work and get what you want. That's definitely an advantage to sewing. You can make exactly what you want to fit you exactly how you how you need. And the more practice, the more sewing you do, the easier that'll get and the better the results. Who else hates the last step of a project? I have a dress that just needs cuff closures and I hate sewing in snaps, button hooks and eyes. Ah, oh, you are Saying how I feel, that is literally the worst step. Absolutely, it is. Sewing eyelets and hooks and eyes and buttons—it's just oh, why? It's 
so tedious. And usually there's like a gazillion of them as well. Finishing on stuff, not enough curve makes clothing fitting just as difficult as too much curve. Yep. Yep. We've all got different bodies and we've all got, you know, our difficulties um, with them. But once we start working out how to make clothes that like fit us and we like, our confidence just, well, I'm saying our, I feel, I can only give my, my personal experience, but I've, I felt so much better since I've been wearing clothes that fit me a little nicer and things like that. My thread just broke. I just got it through. I lost stitch. No! Fell apart. Well, let's hope that doesn't come off now. Read your own. There's literally nothing I can do about it now. Literally nothing. Okay. I think we can do one more and then one more. Stop wrapping up. I like doing the finishing stuff, so I don't like the beginning. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Who else hates mock ups? Ugh, so much effort. Such a waste of fabric as well. Really, really breaks my heart. I like the middle bit. I like the stitching. <laughs> Very straightforward. <laughs> The beginning is rough, the ending is rough, but the journey is good. <laughs> uh, I'm curious, what was the first thing you ever sewed? The first thing I ever sewed was, uh, I did like these like stuffed plushy hearts. They were like three inches big, but li literally just really simple. And then I made a couple of... Uh, I don't even remember the word in Portuguese. Estojos, which are the, where, the things where you put pens. Do I have any Portuguese peeps here? Let me know the English word for estojo. Thank you. They are pencil holders, pencil bag. Is that what they're called? Like a little zippered bag. It's like a rectangle. I'm sorry. <laughs> getting late in the evening. <laughs> um, that's the first the first few things I made just to really learn how the machine worked and then I made a couple of things from Nora Wall's corsets and crinolines. My timeline on what came first is very fuzzy so I know at some point I made a circle skirt as one of my first very very first few projects and then I made uh, two things from Nora Wall's corsets and crinolines. The first one was like a suit 17th century little bodice thing that um, looks terrible and then the other thing I think was the 18th century stays they also look terrible but they were a journey and really got me into stay making and corsets I have a blog have I told you about this oh pencil case thank you um yes it was a pencil case <laughs> sorry my my English sometimes does fail me um I have a blog. I don't know. I don't mention it a lot because it is now pretty much defunct. But if you're interested in my first few projects or like seeing someone start out sewing, like really start out sewing, I think I started it as I started sewing. Um, it's called Happily Ever Taffeta. And I'm pretty sure it's linked on the channel homepage, maybe. Um, I quite like the name Happily Ever Taffeta. I think I need to give my partner some credit on that but yeah and I think my earliest earliest projects are on there it includes like a some cosplays that I did uh there's an 18th century Robert Langlaise which is the first 18th century thing I ever made I made it out of this terrible fabric that shed like crazy it was like some weird sort of upholstery fabric and whenever I finished cutting it it was beige with these black dots and whenever I finished cutting it it looked like I'd been skinning a cheetah in my bedroom it was crazy uh what made you decide to do YouTube uh that's a really good question I kind of 
I really enjoyed the community that sewing has on like a Instagram and then the YouTube thing I've been watching YouTube videos to learn how to sew and then I thought maybe I could share my experiences and maybe they'd help someone out there and so that's kind of why I started uh, some linen and copious notes from Morgan Donner's kirtle video I recommend that was also the first tutorial I used to make a kirtle and it worked out pretty good and it also taught me a lot about making kirtles and then from now on I was able to sort of do them myself Kirtle thread going there um, a skirt really ugly with flowers all over it I'm not sure what the context was for that I missed it for some reason the locals think people that like to sew are desperate for more things to sew <laughs> That's so true. People who don't sew, and whoever sews, it like doesn't have any projects because they're always like, oh, you know, you're not busy. You can just make me, you know, 10 pillowcases in two hours. No, no, I can't. Oh, um, if you don't follow, there's a really good Instagram account. It's called, would you like to sew it? Is it that what it's called? Oh dear. It's called, it's like a sewing meme account, and it's like, can you sew it for me? That's what it's called. Can you sew it for me? It's very, very funny. I would highly recommend um, having a look at it. Um, do you make enough to live on through YouTube? Is it something you recommend? Uh, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. I do not. <laughs> um, YouTube is really geared for big content creators. Um, so like, if you get some solid numbers behind you, I'm sure you can make a living. I mean, I know people make a living out of it, um, but you need you need large numbers. Uh, not just that, you need constant consistency in content. So like, you need to keep publishing every week because if you don't make a video that week, that's money you don't get to pay rent. <laughs> so it is very, very stressful, I, I find it. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if I would recommend it. I really enjoy it as a hobby, so not as a job. So like, I enjoy it because I get to talk to you guys and like, uh, talk about historical costume because I don't really have anyone in life that does that. Um, so I really enjoy it for those things. It's not really about the money because it's not enough to live on. Um, I enjoy it because, you know, I'm sewing anyway. I'm gonna keep sewing. I might as well put it online and Talk to you guys about it. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, skirt was your first sewing project. Skirts are great for first sewing projects. My first one was a circle skirt, and it really the fabric wasn't wide enough to cut out a circle skirt, so I had to piece on a bit at the sides, and it looked so ugly because I didn't buy enough fabric either. Because I was like, oh my gosh, fabric is so expensive. Um, <laughs> but you know, I feel like. Like I still have that skirt around somewhere, and it's a nice memory. Oh, thank you, uh, Madame Luizillo. I don't know if I said that. Um, that's really that's really wholesome to hear. Oh yeah, uh, that account has some fun stories and some cringe ones as well. It's quite, some of them are really sad. Some of them are just so people having no like understanding of the other person as a human being. It makes me really sad. Um, Mock-ups in muslin or old bird sheets are great. Absolutely. Completely agree. I'm still using up my parents' old <laughs> bed sheets for mock-ups. My friends are now also giving me um, the old bed sheets for mock-ups. <laughs> Tell your friends. Someone will be throwing away some sort of fabric that you can use, I swear. Yeah. You do have to have like a sort of discipline to 
get the tasks done that you don't want to do. So I, I usually get into that mindset where it's like I can't start another project until I'm finished with this one. So, yeah. Mock up what is such a thing? <laughs> you live on the edge. Have you guys seen that chart? Someone made a meme where it was like how sewers do with like um, chaotic neutral types or like lawful good types. Let me know what you're at. <laughs> I'm really curious. I love those those memes. Um, I'm I'm a mix. I feel like I'm lawful good for some things where I'm like, I will make a mock-up of most things. I will baste most things, or not most things, I'll baste a lot of things, all that kind of stuff. But on other things, I'm pretty chaotic. Like I just trimmed this hem with a rotary cutter, a ruler, and a, and a prayer, and, <laughs> and that was it. Um, my first project was back in the 90s, one of those maxi style layered dresses that were so popular. Three layers of quilty cotton, it was so bulky and ugly. Oh no, I'm sure it wasn't as bad as you remember. I mean, our first projects are never, you know, shiny, shiny examples of our work. Layered dresses though, I really do enjoy them. Oh, I'm having such 90s nostalgia now. Managed to reduce the list during lockdown from 21 to only 10. Only 10 projects. I'm proud of you too. Wow. That's amazing. I don't think I could do that. Every day I feel like I get a new project. It's literally a running counter that I can't fight against. Crazy. Okay. I'm going to leave it off here, guys. Uh, my daylight has gone. I don't want to submit you to my artificial light because it's very, very poor. And I'm actually quite hungry, so I think I'm going to have to go cook dinner. Um, I'm just going to read these last comments because I don't want to miss any. Going on the ready goat. Yeah, ready. Breading goat is a great project. Lawful good at the beginning of a project, but then things to get chaotic in the middle. Super relatable. Uh, I used to try and only eat one project at a time, but at some point there are so long, so now I have a few UFOs and way too much unrelated fabric. Not just you, Ivy, don't worry. <laughs> I do it the way you were supposed to do it. No cutting corners anymore. Yep, that's true, absolutely. I used to cut a lot more corners when I was when I was younger. <laughs> Chaotic neutral starting out. Oh, stress watching videos. <laughs> D20, the top 20 things are numbered when she finishes a project. <gasps> she was a D20? Oh my god, that's such a genius idea. Absolutely going to do that. Oh my god, yes. Leave it to the dice. The, the dice gods. Amazing. Um, I'm definitely going to do that. If you're on Instagram, drop me a word so I can, I can uh, tag you when I post about that. I made a dress I wore to a formal event. Six dollars, that's great. Oh, yay. I'm glad you guys had a good time. All right. I think I'm, I will have to miss some comments because of the time lag. Thank you so much for coming along. I have really enjoyed this and I hope you did too. Um, I've had a really great time and I might do this again now. It's not as scary. Um, and yeah, I hope you all have a good evening uh, and a good week, bravely facing Monday. And I hope your sewing goes well. And I'll see you on Friday with a new video.